Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose. I am a high school teacher in Brooklyn, New York, and today I'm going to be sharing with you all my three favorite ways to use Padlet. Now I've been speaking about this online program for a really long time, but I haven't had the chance to get on here and just show you like the simplest way that I like to use this program. So some of the reasons why I love Padlet. One, because it's free. So it is a program that you can use and you do not have to pay for. Now there are limits to how many Padlets you can make. You can only make three at a time, or maybe they've increased it to five, because I believe I have five right here on my computer. However, someone had told me in the comments below a while ago on another video that if you archive your Padlet, you can continue to create more. And so thank you, whoever that was, because that has been a game changer because there's so many activities that I use Padlet for and I don't wanna delete them in case a student has to refer back to them for an assignment. And so putting them in an archive doesn't delete them, which is amazing. So I'm going to show you again the three ways that I like to use Padlet. Please keep in mind that I am using Padlet as a tool for myself to administer content to my students or to get some form of collaboration from my students. I'm not necessarily using it for assessments because if you use the free version, you cannot see which students are writing on the Padlet. Now you can tell them to write their names, which I do, but keep that in mind that in order to get all of the features and really enjoy Padlet in its truest form, you do have to pay for it. So I'm just gonna talk to you guys about the free version that I have access to and the three ways that I like to use it. And so here is my Padlet. This is my dashboard. These are the four things that I already have stored. And what I'm going to do is show you how to make a Padlet and also the features that Padlet provides. So here are all of the options, a wall, canvas, stream, grid, shelf, so on and so forth. You all can read. But the ones that I love using is wall, grid, and shelf. Those are the three that I enjoy using the most and that I find the easiest to navigate. And so I'm going to show you an example of creating a Padlet using Shelf. So here are the features. First, you just want to change your title. And for today, this is just going to be a Jury Duty KWL. I am just showing you as an example how you can use this in your classroom. And in the description, I like to just put the directions, but I will also add the directions in Google Classroom as well because the directions are really small here on the actual Padlet website itself. Now again, I am not an expert in using this. I'm just showing you the simplest ways to use them in your classroom and just spice up your remote learning a little bit. Now you can scroll down and you can change the wallpaper, which is awesome. Um, usually I will just pick the brick or the cork board, but I wanted you to see that you can also either upload your own photos or search your own photos. So I just clicked in jury duty and I looked for a photo that I thought was nice and could serve as the background for this one. I saw the chairs, I thought it was cool, and so I added it. Now other features you can do is change the color scheme. You can also change the font, which I like because it just makes it a little different. Other things you can do, I like to keep it um, where it will post the last one first. And then also you can allow the students to comment on the post. I don't. You can require approval and also filter profanity. I always filter profanity. In all honesty, when it comes to approving every comment i personally don't like doing that because my classes are so large i have about 67 students who consistently show up to my class and so going through every single one of them and approving it is a lot of work if you have a smaller class it might be a lot easier to approve them but for me personally and i also have seniors so i do trust that they are doing the right thing when it comes to answering questions and at this point in the school year and in the semester, as far as like the funny business and them playing around and making jokes or writing inappropriate things, it's really 
it doesn't happen at all anymore and the profanity is just a way to protect that they will put an emoji instead of the curse word so the way that I like to do this is I like to post the question at the top again this is shelf so everything the students will write will then be added underneath so you'll see the plus sign underneath each shelf so the first question what is one thing you know about jury duty the second one what is one thing you want to know about jury duty again we're all familiar with kwls and then the last one i just put what is the significance of of jury duty and so this is really simple and for the title usually what i'll tell my students to do is to write their name in the title and where it says write something that's where they will write their response now what is really cool about this as well is that students can either upload a photo they can add a link they can go to google and possibly add a picture they can take their own picture so this is great for students who like to show either their creativity or they like to communicate more with images. You can also change this up and for each shelf you can ask students what is one image or what is one photo that represents this word. When it comes to things um, that are symbolic or words that are symbolic, it would be really great to give students the opportunity to then post their photos under the shelf and then everyone has access to the Padlet and they can look at all of the images or symbols that students have chosen. You can also use this as a hub for students who post their projects, to post major assignments, and then a way for other students to be able to access those things as well. A lot of people like to use this for SEL check-ins. I use this format a lot with advisory, especially in my morning advisory. My students are really reluctant to talking. Oftentimes, when I ask them how they're doing, they'll say things like, tired, tired, hungry, tired. So instead of just getting those words, I like to write a much more detailed, specific question, share the link in the chat, or share it on our Google Classroom stream, and then have them answer that way. But I want to show you the other ways that I use Padlet. So here's something that I'm going to be using this week for my final exam review. I have posted all of the different topics that we have discussed this semester and then it will be the student's responsibility to select two topics and write one thing that they know about each topic. Again, the title will be their name, they will write something in there. And what I love about this is that this will serve as an enormous review sheet for all of my students to be able to refer back to when they are studying for their final exam. And so now let me go back and show you all what the station work items look like. So here's an Alignment Thinker station work that I use with my students. I'm just showing you here that you can put as many stations as you want. This page does go down pretty far. You can also adjust the sizing, but even if it's still too small for your students, if they end up clicking on the actual image itself, the image will expand and it will take up their entire screen so that they are able to see all of the information. Now I created this in Keynote and then I just took a screenshot or a picture of it and then I posted it here. What I also want to show you is that you can change the color of the tabs which is something I really enjoy when it comes to station work so you can change the color and for students this may be really helpful as far as organization to have every station also with a different color. Now although this is called station work a lot of times I will just also use this as group work. Everyone in group one, you have station one. Everyone in group two, you have station two. Everyone in group three, you have station three. And then after they're done answering that, collectively we will come back as a class from breakout rooms and students will share out and be able to get the other information from the other stations. Oftentimes too, I will use this just to help organize information for homework or for independent assignments. So even though it will be considered stations, I just find it a much more visually appealing way to give them content when we are going over a lot of information and much more detailed stuff. 
Now the last thing that I actually forgot to show you guys when I was recording this is how you would share this with your students. If you look, I'll just put a still image really quickly. If you look at the top right corner, you have the option where it says share. And then from there, you can copy the URL to your clipboard and you can just share that link in Google Classroom. Room. You can share it in a PowerPoint. You can share it anywhere at all that you share materials with your students. Oftentimes, I will add this into the assignment section with the worksheet, or I will just add the link to the Padlet inside of the worksheet that my students will be using for that day. So again, it's really simple, very easy. That's what my videos are all about. You guys know this already. I'm not really here showing you the greatest innovative stuff. But it's just simple and effective ways that you can use simple programs in your classroom to make your life easier, but also to give your class a little bit of sass. And so these are the three ways that I like to use Padlet. There are countless of other ways. You saw it there. There's a map option. There's a timeline. But for me, I find this the most effective because I have such a large class size. I'm pretty sure you can have students use the timeline in groups or mapping in groups. This would be really cool even for uh, group competitions. There's so many things that you can do with it. Again, but for the purpose of my classroom and having seniors, this is the best way that I find using this program. But if there are other ways, as always, please throw your ideas down in the comments below and I will see you all in the next video.